You know, honey, I got a song I wrote just especially for you. I'm going to sing for you. Just for you. What is it? It's called Hey, Good Looking. Oh. Huh? This says, Hank Williams Memorial, September 17th, 1923 to January 1953. He's only, I think, just about to turn 30. So on January 1st, 1953 in Oak Hill, West Virginia here, Hank Williams Senior, Senior made his last stop on his last tour. This memorial is dedicated by his fans who wish to keep his memory and music alive forever. Mom was a big fan. Uh, it's a pretty tragic story. You know, I mean, he was, he had some addiction problems, but kind of why I wanted to do the story was because of the, the undercurrent to this story that a lot of people don't talk about. Legendary country singer Hank Williams Sr. died at the age of 29 from hemorrhaging in his heart in the insufficiency of his right ventricle. This is an accepted story of how Hank Williams died in West Virginia on his way to a New Year's show, but some think dun, 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 that this isn't the real story, and I'm going to tell you why. Some think that Hank Williams died at the Andrew Johnson Hotel in Knoxville, Tennessee under questionable circumstances. But the accepted story goes that just before dawn on New Year's Day in 1953, a baby blue Cadillac pulled into the Pure Oil gas station on the south end of Oak Hill. And in the back seat lay country music superstar Hank Williams. He had been dead for several hours already. He had rigor mortis, probably from an accidental overdose of morphine and whiskey. But let's play devil's advocate for a moment. Shall we? <laughs> hey. They always change. And I say this is maybe seven hundred pounds. But what they're laying them down? Probably four five hundred pounds. Oh yeah? And he's got a, I own a property. He has nothing but single wire build, huh? People think it's too expensive to buy. They won't pay it. Yeah, they, they pretty good. I never, I get chased for one, but I'm sure I don't want him to. Yeah. Pretty neat. He needs glasses. Thank you. Thank you. You have a good day. He needs a pair of glasses, though. Yeah. Whoever did this did a really good job. He actually looks fuzzy. He does. <laughs> so we're at the Hubert E. Jones Library in Oak Hill, West Virginia. 
Do you notice the big tank? You can see the yeah, water I got the Oak Hill tank. It looks like people's been doing stuff here. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you Hank Williams' story of what some people think happened and tell you why. We're also going to, if we have time, visit what they call Hank's last stop as far as being alive, which is a restaurant and... Okay, again. So it is very loud here, so we're gonna we're gonna get out of here and tell you more about Hank at Hank our Williams next stop. At our next stop. <laughs> Sr., or as his birth given name, Hiram, was born September 17, 1923, in Mount Olive, Alabama. He had an incredible country music career in his very short life. He recorded 55 singles that reached the top 10 of the Billboard country charts. He had 12 that rose to the number one spots in the charts. He was by all accounts the modern father of country music and he continues to hold that position today. Countless songs feature his name, his likeness, and most of them allude to his prowess as a country music man or his tendency to live an outlaw country singer's lifestyle. Without Hank Williams, country music might look a lot different. The golden years of country music might not have ever happened if it weren't for the legend of Hank Williams. Of course, Hank Williams lived one of those rock star lives that burns hot and flames out fast. So as I went through earlier the accepted story of Hank Williams' death, of how he died in his baby blue car um, somewhere between the restaurant that we're going to visit a little later and the gas station next to the library. The gas station's now gone, by the way. So Hank was supposed to perform in Charleston, West Virginia on New Year's Eve, 1952. Unfortunately, Nashville, Tennessee was in the middle of an ice storm, so the country singer couldn't fly to the venue. Instead, he hired Charles Carr, a college student, to drive him from Nashville to Charleston so he'd make the performance on time. So Charles and Hank arrived in Knoxville, Tennessee at the famous Andrew Johnson Hotel on Gay Street just after 7 p.m. Hank checked into the hotel and immediately went up to his room. By this time, Charles had realized that they wouldn't be able to make the show in West Virginia, so he called the venue to relay the bad news and tell them the job was to go ahead and take Hank to the next show in Ohio. At the Andrew Johnson Hotel, Hank ordered steaks to be delivered to his room. He also requested a doctor. He was complaining that the effects of the combination of chloral hydrate and alcohol he'd consumed before arriving in Knoxville was giving him problems. So he wanted something to con counteract the concoction. So along comes Dr. P.H. Cardwell. He injected Williams with two shots of B12 that were mixed with some morphine. So I'm sure you can see the problem here. Around 10.45 p.m., Hank and Charles checked out of the Andrew Johnson Hotel the same night. Hotel workers had to carry Hank out to his car before the two men ventured off towards Ohio. As the story goes, Charles allegedly stopped at a small 24-hour restaurant where he asked Hank if he wanted something to eat. He said Hank responded with a no, and they carried on. In Oak Hill, West Virginia, Charles stopped to fill up at a local filling station. This was when he noticed Hank Williams unresponsive in the back seat. Apparently, rigor mortis had already set in by this time. I'm going to show you a problem with that when we get to the restaurant that he supposedly was asked if he wanted something to eat. So the local coroner, who spoke almost no English, performed an autopsy in which he found hemorrhaging in Hank's heart, probably caused by weakness in his right ventricle. From there, the story had been settled by the media and those that were there in Hank's final moments. 
So we all know that many celebrities have died under peculiar circumstances. This is certainly the case when it comes to young celebrities and musicians who die before their time. Conspiracies then take over from there, offering a host of alternative answers for the person's death in hope that it seems like there is a reason for it. But the truth is, in most cases, there is no conspiracy, just death and addiction. But in the case of Hank Williams' death, it isn't a conspiracy either, but there is definitely some people making moves in the background while his death was being played out. To see the full picture of Hank's death, we have to start at the end in West Virginia. When Charles, Hank's driver, was being interviewed, he left out a couple of interactions he had had that were suspicious. Charles said he discovered Hank's lifeless body in Oak Hill at a filling station when he noticed William's blanket had fallen off, revealing a cold, dead hand. While there, while there is evidence he stopped at the station, it was found that he stopped at another gas station prior to the one in Oak Hill, not that far away. The attendant there recalls that he told Charles that he had a problem referring to the lifeless body of Hank Williams before Charles claimed to have discovered that Hank was dead. Charles also left out an interaction with a doctor at Oak Hill Hospital in which he asked the doctor to help him. The doctor claims that Charles was acting extremely nervous and distraught, at least enough for the doctor to begin suspecting him of a role in Williams' death. Why would Charles leave out these stops and interactions? Was he hiding something, or was he just scared? Now let's flash back to Knoxville. On New Year's Eve, Ch Hank and Charles had just arrived at the Andrew Johnson Hotel at 7 in the evening. They went straight up to their rooms where Hank ordered steaks and a doctor. According to the doctor and Charles, the doctor gave Hank two shots. Both were a combination of B12 and morphine. An extremely short time later, Hank and Charles checked out of the Andrew Johnson, and hotel employees had to physically carry Hank to the car. Unknown for some time by both West Virginia investigators and the public was that Charles and Hank were pulled over just outside of Knox County about 1 a.m. that night. A Tennessee Highway patrolman wrote Charles a ticket for excessive speed and instantly noticed the body laying in the back seat. According to the patrolman, Swan Kitts told Charles that Williams appeared to be dead. Charles simply responded by saying Hank had been given a sedative by a local doctor and he was just resting. The police officer said that he bought this. So Charles and Hank continued until Charles allegedly discovered William's death way later in West Virginia. So the statements don't add up. Charles' entire story is full of either misremembered events or ones deliberately left out. The timing doesn't add up. Even though both the doctor and Charles agree the doctor injected Hank, the toxology report showed nothing in Hank's system beyond alcohol, which is weird. The fact that Charles and the doctor allowed Hank to be physically moved by staff and employees seems suspicious. The fact that Charles and Hank only stayed a couple hours at the hotel before running off in the middle of the night in an ice storm seems really suspicious. So what happened to Hank Williams Sr.? The person possibly responsible in this is Toby Marshall. Toby was a former alcoholic and prisoner, and he was a very bad advisor for the country star in peril. Hank Williams and his mother were easy prey for a man who's looking for some money. Hank Williams got surgery in Vanderbilt Hospital in Nashville that didn't turn out to be successful. His backache was still there, and alcohol was a bad painkiller. So Hank Williams now and then took a shot of morphine from local doctors. When he met Toby Marshall, Hank Williams and his mother believed he could help them. Toby had an illegal diploma from the Chicago University of Applied Sciences and Arts, which he had bought from a traveling salesman at a filling station. He pretended like he was a doctor sort of like a therapist to Hank Williams and his mother. He also provided Hank with many, many drugs, including chlorohydrate, morphine, 
and several other things. His last prescription was 24 grams of chloral hydrate, December 1952. Chloral hydrate is a sedative that depresses the central nervous system. On December 30th, very close to Hank's death, Hank's mother called Toby and asked him to look after him, to look after him once he got to Charleston. Toby's wife also died under suspicious circumstances and her husband was interrogated in court. He was sent to prison and it was uh, acclaimed to have written a book about Hank Williams in which he states the death of Hank Williams was a suicide. This was all very convenient for Toby. Long story short, Toby definitely probably had a hand in the demise of Hank Williams in one way, shape, or form. If anything, he was at least gassed to the fire and what had become Hank Williams' sort of addiction. So what a lot of people think is this, and you decide what you think. Hank Williams died in Knoxville, Tennessee at the Andrew Johnson Hotel sometime in the evening hours of New Year's Eve 1952. Most of the evidence points to this being a very likely scenario. It's amazing actually what people will believe and put up with because they just don't want to be involved. Just make this problem go out of my face so I can move on with what I'm doing. Finally, the police officer who pulled Charles over just outside of Knox County told Charles his passenger looked dead. What are the chances that Hank was actually alive in that car on the way to West Virginia? Well, it's not very high. And why would Charles not check on Hank after the officer said that he looked really bad? Did he already know Hank was dead when they left Knoxville? Most likely. Charles most likely knew that Hank had died in the Andrew Johnson Hotel that night. But why the cloak and dagger routine? Because someone didn't want Knoxville, the Andrew Johnson Hotel, or the doctor in question to be where Hank Williams moved on from this life. Someone wanted to make sure the story was Hank died on the road to Ohio, not in Knoxville, but who and why? So who actually killed Hank Williams and why? Or who covered it up? I don't think we'll ever get the real answer to this at this point, but it either had to be the doctor who injected him or a shadow influencer that just didn't want him to have died at the Andrew Johnson Hotel. Either way, somebody wanted Hank's body out of Knoxville immediately and definitively, and they succeeded at this. So what do you think? Leave a comment and messages and tell me what you think about this story. Because I obviously find holes in this story as well. So we're in Skyline Drive-In, which is known as Hank Williams' last stop. Apparently on the way to Oak Hill, where he was found dead, the driver stopped here to eat something and asked Hank if he wanted something to eat, where Hank said no. The problem is that when I did GPS from the last location where he's found dead to here, it was only like 10 minutes. And according to the medical examiner, here he had rigor mortis, which means this stop. He was alive and then six minutes later. So this stop couldn't have, he couldn't have been alive here. <laughs> There's no way. So we're going to go in and we're supposed to have some of the best hot dogs in West Virginia. So we're eating outside, but it is very laid back here. Yeah, it's basically it's basically it's a little bar with a kitchen, 
Um, and they've got this little area out here. I'm assuming that back in Hank's day, this was probably all parking lot. Right. Uh, the weird thing about it, you know, the, the drivers, you know, like Heather explained, the driver's numbers, his mileage, his numbers, his time, it don't add up. You know, the two and two is always four. It's never nine, you know. So, so it's looking like maybe he did die in Tennessee. Um, the doctor gave him two shots that had morphine in them and he probably overdosed yeah. but either way we'll never know we're just kind of speculation speculation yeah. and we were hungry yeah <laughs> so we'll yeah. see what happens with this food yeah supposedly what was it the second best hot dogs in the state or something, something like that yeah yeah so we'll, we're gonna find out ain't we <laughs> <laughs> well that was fast well, you're sure fast. Well, baby. So you're fast. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't work here. That's probably why I'm fast. <laughs> Thank she, you. Her girl quit on her, so, uh -huh. and they didn't have onion rings, so. That's fine. Okay. Whatever. Fine. Appreciate right, we'll it. Bring it out as soon as it gets done. Y'all need anything else right now? No. Okay. Good to go. Thank you. So take a bite of the second, the, well, it, it's supposed to be one of the best hot dogs in the state. Yeah. Ready? Mm-hmm. By the way, while he's doing that, um, the woman that was just here was saying that everyone knows that when Hank got here that he was already dead. One of the workers. Hmm. hmm. That technically this is where, you know, where the mon the monument and all that stuff should be. So what do you think? Needs to be a little hotter. <laughs> Is it good? Yeah, it's good. I don't know about. <laughs> They're good though. <laughs> All right, I'm ready to eat. We've starved to death. Yeah, hold up. Uh, we had Applebee's coupons. <laughs> Wait, gift cards. Gift cards from Applebee's. We sailed by Applebee's to come to Hank's $60 last stop. $60 worth. Yeah. To come to Hank's last stop and have hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Applebee's too fancy for us. We're hillbillies. That's right. <laughs> now this is the inside of Hank's last stop. <laughs> Look at that. You would think it would be, you know, a dude named Hank. And this is the last stop before you get out into the country. You know, the last stop for gas, drinks, food, whatever. But it's not. It actually means Hank's real last stop. But this is the bar. It's the original bar. Still there. That's the original one. But there have been a lot of people got drunk in here over oh, the years, yeah. ain't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still do. Still do. <laughs> uh, I, I, way more what they did then. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll bet you that if Hank knew that, he would be pleased. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for letting us. Care, thank y'all for letting us film inside real quick. I just want to show the inside of the bar real fast. Thank y'all. Y'all have a great day. Hey, have a safe trip. Uh, good hot dogs, by the way. Oh, sure. Thank you. <laughs> thank y'all. Y'all have a great day. And don't work too hard now. <laughs> a true one of a kind guys Hank's last stop a true one of a kind slice of real Americana how cool is that Bur -bur burgers barbecue and hot dogs that is wild isn't it just a little tiny place beside the road that you would drive we drove right by this yesterday going to uh thurmond we drove right by this place and happened to look you know coming back up well that that's it that's it we got to stop there and have hot dogs <laughs>